Greetings from Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen, I was looking the other way when Paramount released... The Soul of Detroit. Then I heard people talking about it at lunch in the studio commissary. Letters began to come in from you, asking why we didn't broadcast it. In self-defense, I saw the picture and discovered that it is a prime example of how to maintain suspense in a motion picture or any other kind of drama. I discovered, too, just why this... Soul of Detroit. ...made a new star overnight. His name is... M.L. Elric. You asked it to ride your truck, you ride my truck. It's gone. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on. That is not paid for by them. That is paid for by the people of Detroit. You are qualified, M.L. I'm not qualified for this job. Let me tell you something. You want to go right now? Okay? You want to go right now, Hey kids, don't call it a comeback because I've been here for years. Cecil B. DeMille, star overnight. Who the hell does he know? <laughs> You've also been here for an hour. I think we just did an hour show uh, before the show for each other. Well, we were waiting for Sean to get here and then we realized he's not coming. So uh, I take it back. We did a show for zoos pretty much. but um, I miss There was zoos. a lot of good talk. There was uh, talk about presidential sex. Uh, there was talk about uh, Adam Gahan and John Walker Lind, American terrorists. Yes, and which one of them has a connection to Depeche Mode? And which one has a connection to Center Square? Who, who's Center Square? Isn't that Paul Lind? Wasn't Paul Lind Center Square? Oh, yeah, Square? yeah, 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 yeah. Center for the Block, yeah, from the Hollywood Squares. Did Did you know that, um, the, remember the, the host for a long time, Peter Marshall? Yeah. Do you know what his real name is? Marshall Peters? Peter Lecoq. Oh, really? That's why he, he went to... Peter Marshall. And his son actually was a pretty good baseball player. He played for the Cubs. Drew would know him. I just love the fact that why, why do you know something about <laughs> Hollywood Squares in the background of the host? And somehow we got to Paul Lind and Lecoq within the first two minutes of the show. Maybe, Always. Maybe it's time to go. I was just pointing out why we were, why we were so late because we were enjoying our conversation because we haven't seen you in so long. Or I I'd just it. been, yeah, on a, on a herky-jerky overseas hookup, but it was uh, it was great to be away, but it's great to be back with you all here in the soul of Detroit. With Mark Fellhauer, my friend, my co-host, producer, uh, m- 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 uh, magician when it comes to... You know, he'll fix that audio. That's how good he is. Absolutely won't. But, I'll make it worse. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, I take it all back. But yes, production genius. So uh, it's good to it's good to be here. Sean is not with us. He's on vacation. He's uh, taking his family to um, um, uh, the den. So uh, so that's cool. Wait, so that's, that's fun. I think I think the he's, den in the back. Yeah, he's got a staycation there. But you know, Sean has that estate in Washtenaw County where it goes back so far that he could be they could be glamping somewhere on uh, the back forty at his place. Hmm. It's glamping. Yeah, is that isn't that what you know? What he's gonna say he's gonna say, "I told you all I'd zoom in." Yeah, that's right. It's, I was gonna be here, but you're not present. That's we just the do a difference show? between being here and being present. Well, let's just do a show where we talk in Sean's voice the whole time. Could people? Could people do that? Would they stay with I, us? I don't think I could pull up just non sequiturs like he does, where he just. What you have for dinner? <laughs> I just I can't. Can I, I can I ask a question? I can find I the man question? utterly fascinating. Uh, wh- why is it that when people get abducted by aliens, there's always an anal probe? <laughs> have you ever thought about that? No, no, no one has, Sean. That, I once stole a moped in Thailand, and then he'd say, "No, no, it was in Japan, and it wasn't a moped; it was a small motor scooter." Like, What's the difference? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, but we miss Sean, so hopefully. He'll be back with us because next week we're putting together a special episode yeah. for 4th of July. Everybody else will be sunning themselves by a pool or a lake or wherever, and that's the way it should be. We will be... I'll be in a basement. Virtually slaving away. Yes, Mark will continue to work on his moon tan. <laughs> I, I saw a lot of guys with Mark's complexion at the Sisters of Mercy show. Uh, they just happen to be goths. Mark instead is a professional broadcaster, but it's the same... same uh, daylight you get the same amount of vitamin e i think in both roles when uh, when did you uh when did you get back late wednesday night so we were oh, talking okay. about how cheap it is when you take some of these flights on these international car- carriers and i was telling you you know you need to fly out of you need to fly out of toronto That's because it's, it's much cheaper and it is much cheaper and it's not as far away as you think but what i didn't tell you is you just have to make sure you're prepared for a travel 
mishaps. And we got there really early, which is not at all characteristic of the Elric uh, family. On the way back, though, there was some sort of mishap where they shut down the 401 outside of Sarnia. Oh, yeah. And it took us two and a half hours to cross the Blue Water Bridge. What? Which just made for a miserable return home. But if that had hit us on the way to the airport, we would have been screwed. So so Toronto is definitely worth it, but you have got to don't, plan it. Don't you have Waze? I mean, didn't Waze tell you to come through the... Come, I'm surprised you wouldn't just come through Detroit anywhere well, where you live. Well, what happened is... Well, we're on the east side, so if you can just keep going east, you just That's go out true. to Port Huron and yeah. you pick it up and it's a quicker shot to the airport. Because we, we, we went to Niagara and on the way out, always take always go through Sarnia, right? Blue Water Bridge, it's so yeah. fast. It's a nice drive. It's easy. But on the way back, the girls have never been through the tunnel. So they went, oh, how okay. exciting is that to go through the Detroit tunnel? Oh, so we came back that way and it added about a half hour because the traffic and just going, going through and yeah. Well, what happened to us is I think there was some sort of traffic thing because we were following uh, live GPS, which would have directed us to go. There's a point where you can veer off yeah. to Windsor. Mm -hmm. And everything was copacetic until after we crossed that point. So I think we There's just There's a lot of construction the Windsor way, too. Calamity. Oh, yeah. Well, you should see the roads they're fixing in Canada. I mean, the roads they're replacing would be the best road in Michigan. Yeah. I mean, there's a divot, and they're like, oh, yeah, we got to tear all this up. And I said, wow, I... Uh, I didn't know that, that Governor Granholm had become the premier of Ontario because she's fixing the damn roads there on the other side of, uh, south of Detroit. I, I wait, remember, that's okay. Oh, that's, damn, why do wait, I you've been do gone, every, Dude, everyone does that because I, um, cause you're misogynistic and you can't tell your female governors apart. Well, I was just talking to one of my colleagues about Governor Granholm and some of the incentives and that's things why. they were involved in on, um, on like the A123 battery plant that went bankrupt and everything and how she was involved in some of these deals that were going to help Michigan be on the cutting edge of all this other stuff and how many of them did not come to fruition. And now what is she doing? She's the energy secretary. Yeah. So, oh, wow. I guess based on the track record of, of, uh, God, does anything scream politics more than that? <laughs> like that she's the energy, uh, whatever. Yeah. I guess that was a spot where, uh, where, uh, Biden thought that she would fit. I was going to say uh, Martin Van Buren because I often confuse chief executives with their with their uh, with their counterparts. But uh, the Van Buren boys. Oh, they're very. very no, the, that was the gang, wasn't it? That yeah. was after Costanza. It was the eighth That's president. Right. That's right. So. <laughs> no, they were after, it was after Kramer, the Van Buren boy. That's and then right. I think eventually, yeah. But there, that's that the was symbol. a sign when I was banging. That's the symbol because he was holding something with his thumb, so he had to eat. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. God, I love that show. A lot of stuff to ask you about since you've been gone, but yeah, I but think first, you have stuff to tell me. Yeah, no, we first we got to thank a few people. Uh, of course, our presenting sponsor, David Hall and Hall Financial. If you're looking for a great deal on a mortgage, if you're looking to buy a house, if you're looking to take money out of your house, Hall Financial is the people you want to call. We'll tell you how to do that in a little while. And our premier sponsor, Luke Nowacki, sponsors all the shows on the network, has been a generous sponsor both of our show and of our many charitable endeavors. We're going to tell you how Luke can help you prepare for a secure financial future with his company, Pinnacle Wealth Strategies. So you don't have to fly out of Toronto when you go somewhere internationally? Well, actually, because of Luke, I can fly out of Toronto to some place other than to Montreal. All right. you know, so so that's 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 how. It how works. much did you save flying out of Toronto? Do you? And then there's also say? Irish Coffee and Cadu Cafe. We'll tell you what's going on at those great East Side establishments too. Well, so out of Detroit in the in the window that we were looking to fly, it would have cost eleven or twelve hundred dollars, and I think we would have stopped for a change in Iceland. Okay. Out of out of Toronto, we flew direct to Edinburgh for a huge. little less than eight hundred dollars, and I think partly that's because there are a lot of scots in canada in uh ontario in particular so that that route may have enough volume that they have a non-stop that they can support but those international carriers man they really treat you a lot better than these domestic oh carriers. sure it's but but having having a not having a stop and your stop is kind of toronto it's like taking a four-hour flight and then flying yeah, you have to do the drive. Yeah, although again, I don't know if that's worth it for three to four hundred dollars. Well, the the other savings, although it is a person well, for yeah. four people, yeah. yeah, not only that, but I think they treated us better than we would have gotten treated on our on Delta or one of our local carriers. And and the other thing is, if you plan in advance, you can park your car for like four bucks a day. Oh, okay. Which is a huge savings when you're staying for a couple of weeks. So I mean, it all kind Gasoline. of balance. Yeah, play tolls and there's gas, but it's and if you if you time it right, you can. Have a night or an afternoon in Toronto, which is a great city. So, so really, uh, all right. 
It's not as dumb as I would have thought. No. Well, I mean, it's like all this shit. Every, every time you think you're taking a shortcut in the end, you're like, how much did I really save? How much easier was it? But the more people you travel with, the better the deal becomes. So, so what have you been up to since you got back? Well, I, I wrote a column about the, uh, the similarities and the differences between Boris Johnson, who was the deposed premier of the UK, and Donald Trump. Both of them happened to be making headlines the same week. I was reading the local papers and watching the BBC and ITV and Sky News and all the stuff they have over there. And all the stories are about this former leader of the nation that got caught in a scandal where they're <laughs> revealing documents. I'm like, well, who am I reading about? They both have funky hairdos. And I thought, is this Donald Trump? Well, no, it was all Boris Johnson. But the interesting thing was all these leading conservatives and their party over there is the conservative party are bailing on Johnson. They're like, no. And they're having votes on whether to censure him. They're like, you should vote your conscience. You know, if we, if we allow Johnson to get away with lying to parliament, like he was lying, then we demean all our institutions. We diminish public trust in, in our leadership. So you shouldn't. And meanwhile, over here, you got Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and other people saying, we're going to go get Merrick Garland. These people who are questioning Trump, we're going to, we're going to attack them. We're going to destroy these federal institutions. And the approach to two scandal-ridden leaders was kind of startling to me because how, how what much, you saw how, in England was they want to preserve faith in government, whereas here it's like, no, we're going to tear it all down because we don't believe in it. It's really... Yeah, but how much of that has to do with how the leader is chosen, right? Because they just choose it out of whatever party's in control. So they must like Sunak now. Isn't that his name, the... Pardon yeah, me. Rishi Sunak, who's a good-looking guy, so they call him oh. Dishy Rishi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's Stupid. the tabloids for you. But, well, no, their system is where you have to be a member of the party and a member of parliament to be chosen as a leader, but then they'll find easy seats for you. So let's say, let's say you're the most popular Republican in America, but you happen to live in, in Royal Oak. So okay. you're never going to get elected to Congress. Well, what they would do is they'd say, well, we're not going to run you out of Royal Oak. You can run for parliament out of, um, you know, out of, uh, uh, out of um, Lenox Township or somewhere in Macomb County where, where a, a Republican has a really good chance of winning. So you can kind of move around. And so while you do have to be picked from the group, they stack the pond and they stack the pool so that you can get in there. But there's a difference where you could be Speaker of the House in the U.S. and not be a member of Congress if you're going to be the the uh, premier or the prime minister, you have to be a member of parliament. I, I just mean from this perspective, here we choose a leader, right? And then the party kind of follows it. We're there, they choose the party, and then they choose a leader out of that. I, Am I, I sim I, oversimplifying it? Oh I, Well, I, I think it, it's more personality-driven because, you know, we've had presidents who were questioned before and people didn't attack the federal institutions but Trump is someone who, if you say something he doesn't like or something he doesn't believe in, he will go after you viciously. Mm -hmm. And now the Republican Party leadership is like that, too. So the party does kind of take on the... But, I mean, Trump could easily win, right? Even if yeah. behind closed doors they wouldn't want him to be the president, he could still easily win. Poor Johnson has no chance of becoming prime minister again. So it's easier to dismiss him. Probably, although the, 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 the difference, the other difference between Johnson and Trump is... Johnson led his party to one of the hugest parliamentary landslides ever, whereas Trump now has led the Republicans yeah. to parliamentary defeats in three straight elections. So, so the notion that you rise and fall with your leader, the, even there there's kind of a difference because the conservatives are probably going to get beat under their new leader because nobody likes him that much either. Well, you were telling me you went to um, his speech because Trump was in Oakland County. Yeah, so I got back and Trump was coming to – to uh, Novi uh, to be the keynote speaker for the Oakland County Republicans big fundraiser. And that's, that's a huge get for them. Vance Patrick, who's the chairman of the Oakland County Republican party, you know, big ups to him for bringing in Trump. And it was a huge event. I mean, it was packed. They sold out and then they sold more tickets. He finally got his man of the decade award that he's <laughs> mentioned before that he didn't have. Yeah. Although, is, I, I found that part to be very, very funny. Although he was never presented with anything. There was no plaque. Yeah. They didn't, you know, they didn't even say, ladies and gentlemen, here's our man of the decade. You know, it was, it was still <laughs> kind of weird. But that story is he claimed that he was given the man of the decade award, which 
yeah. it didn't exist. So they're like, okay, well, we'll give you it now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, <laughs> I just yeah. think it's funny because it means nothing. So you're covered, but but it was you know it was a big crowd, uh, loads of women wearing tight red dresses. It was nice. almost like a Republican prom. All right, and uh, yeah, and Trump came in. He spoke for an hour, and the thing about Trump, whether you like him or not. Uh, whether you think Biden is too old or, or, or is just kind of a different type of personality, Trump is pure energy. I mean, mm-hmm, yeah. this guy has just one gear and it is, it is full T? throttle. Yeah. You know, he, he just goes and, and he doesn't have notes. It's all kind of stream of consciousness. I, I really felt sorry for the reporters covering it because you're thinking it's the same stuff. Yeah, what's the news here? What are we going to roll out here? And and I think both the news and free press very wisely emphasized his comments about electrification of vehicles and how he thinks the internal combustion engine, you know, still has a future and how Michigan is going to suffer if we try and go to all EVs. It's a, it's a that's pretty fair. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a new thing for him. At least that's local, right? It's not well, the yeah, same. Yeah. It, it shows that he knows where he is. Yeah. You know, he didn't just wake up in some town and somebody pressed go and he, you know, hits the regular old stump speech, but he went for an hour. I don't even know if I saw him sip uh, water, unlike uh, little Marco, but <laughs> he was, you know, he's a vi- very dynamic speaker, but it, it, there was some, in a few corners, some eye rolling cause like, eh, I've heard all this before. And yeah. it is kind of all about you again. And he brings up the 2020 thing. And I know there are a lot of Republicans who are like, I really like where the country was under Trump. I really liked his policies, but we got to get past this 2020 election denial stuff. And I think if he would just drop that, he would do oh, yeah. much better among Republicans. Now, as he showed in some polling data he put up there, he's doing great among Republicans. He's like 41% or better in all the polls out the there. The last poll I saw, too, which I thought this was interesting now that they're all, or they were all in, in Iowa campaigning, that Trump's gone up 5%. And um, DeSantis has gone down nine percent. So it's you know it shows how long this is, man. As he was saying, people are getting to know him. They don't like him. He's got no personality. He's right. And he's stuck with Ron DeSanctimonious. I kind of am pulling for me. Ron Ron. is just classically great. I I I still think simple and perfect. (laughs) I still think we're going to see Meatball Ron before this is all said and done. But um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty and, and one there was one. One uh, really kind of heart-stopping moment in the middle of Lisa McLean, who's a congresswoman from mm-hmm. from St. Clair and, and Macomb counties and a little bit of Oakland County, everything went black. All the lights went out. And I think it was because of the storm, but it was like, what the hell is going on here? Wow. When, so how, how long about oh, the storm, by the way? Um, when did he speak? Was it two nights ago? Sunday night. See, my, so. t- my timeline's all messed up from that storm, too. Because so. you got those electric clocks, man. DTE. Hey, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta read this uh these texts from DTE. You know, they they're <laughs> supposed to be on top of it now, letting you know when your power is gonna be back. Because that's always been my biggest gripe is give me an estimate. Even even if you're way off, just give me an estimate. Um Do you and, use the app? I no, I'm not using their app. I don't want to no, use No, but it, their it app. gives you suggestions on when they're gonna be. Well, there's their map is supposed to do that too. Right. But the map doesn't do it. But they sent me an update saying uh, at 923 yesterday that, yeah, you'll have your power back today. Same exact verbatim update um, at 655. Yeah, you'll get, you'll get your power back today. And then at 12.03 a.m., I get a text for them. My power came back at, I want to say like 1030 last night. 12.03, I get an alert from them. Hey, we're really sorry. We were not able to restore your power by when we said we could. I'm sitting there going, but you did. Oh, so your power's back. It came back last night. They thought it was still out. They might still think it's still out. It's just, this is the problem I have with all this stuff is like, can you get your shit together to let us know? Because if you tell me it's going to be back around a certain time, I can plan instead of just sitting there waiting for it to come back. I'm sorry. Totally went off on a tangent. So so are you reading these stories about how they're making the system more reliable and just shaking your head? Yeah, because, well, first off, I don't trust that they will make it more reliable if they can't even get you know, basic communication with your customers down. Well, so one of the guys we connect with in Scotland is a great guy, Tony. He's married to my friend Marie, who I used to work with uh, when I worked at the youth hostel in Ireland. And he works for one of the power companies in England. And 
most of their lines are underground, so that's a big advantage over our system where the wires are overhead. But they guarantee customers 12 hours, you will have power restored. And if Oof. they don't do it, they 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 go through yeah. all kinds of hell with uh, everyone knows losses. how messed up it is here and and i know power's going to go out and when it does just let me know just let me know what's going on when you think it might come back and you know don't bullshit me well, sorry with the underground wires too you know i always think well detroit's an old city you know so, well england's pretty old you know i think <laughs> i think they've yeah, actually been around longer than we have so why is all this shit underground and ours is above ground i don't understand that but it's a uh, it's a it's a real it's a real drag, but so yeah so you know kind of was thinking about Trump watching Boris Johnson get roasted on the spit and then got right, to see him on uh, Sunday. A commentator and, um, underneath your column by the way um, scored you an F in journalism. Oh, for what? If this article was written by a past winner of the Pulitzer Prize, we're in some serious trouble, folks. This column is an F in any journalism school worth its medal. Oh, why? It's, how, first off, it's column. How do I get the F? Column. Hmm? How did I get the F? What was the, he doesn't? Was it, he doesn't tell you why. Okay. He just he just gave you an F for it. Well, maybe he didn't get the joke. I mean, the the first line was you know I thought the biggest problem I'd have when I went to Scotland was learning the language. You, you know, don't. <laughs> they speak English. You know, so, yeah. so you don't start with a joke. F. Yeah, or or it's like well, well you, they don't speak Gaelic over there. Well, no, that wasn't. That I don't know. Was I just thought you'd want to like want to know that you got an F. <sighs> Congratulations. Well, you know what that F could be for? It could be for doing a fine job. Yeah. It was fine. It was finest journalism ever. <laughs> you know, if you're looking for live music, the Cadju is absolutely the place to go. There's music inside. There's music outside. On Wednesdays, there's karaoke. On Thursday, the Joe Stanley Trio will be there. Friday is Super Crunch. You must know them. That's the Grateful Dead tribute band. More tribute bands on say with Shattered. They do uh, Rolling Stones face-to-face. -face. Sunday. Eric Goebel's Sunday Fun Day Jam. It's as fun as it is easy to say. <laughs> they are going to be closed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week for the oh, holiday. July 4th, yeah. But uh, normally Monday is Muscle Madness, All You Can Eat Muscles. Um, all kinds of great stuff going on there from feather bowling to live music to great food. The kitchen's open very late. Eat us, latest kitchen on the east side, uh, as far as uh, I know from our research department. Zeeves is, is doing some more research to confirm that, but I think that's pretty solid. To find out more, go to kajucafe.com. Beautiful. Um, other things that happened while you were gone, because I know you keep up on the news here, and there's a lot of stuff going on in Detroit. Um, I thought of you when I saw the story about the ex-city councilman, Andre Spivey. Oh, who, the guy I, who I, got me into politics uh, indirectly. Exactly, yeah. <sighs> I, I got into politics he, he to take him out of politics, and he got out of politics, and then I got knocked out of politics. Yeah, he's not a fan of you. Oh, really? Did he say well, something? I mean, no, no, never mind. No comment. Strike yeah. that from the record. No, he's. it's funny because <laughs> when I would try and get him for a story at Fox 2, even if it was a positive story, never got a return call. But when I would see him at Costco, he'd be like, hey, what's going on? He's waving us like, you know, well, that's Come interesting. On, so we can turn it on and off. But he was supposed to be in prison for bribery, for accepting two, bribes. Yeah, two and, years. Yeah, bribery conspiracy, and he's out early. No, last week. Were you surprised to see that? Last week was like M. L. Elric's greatest shits. <laughs> um, Kalilia Davis, the <laughs> judge who didn't go to work, finally gets her discipline. Now she's no longer in office. She, but the Supreme Court agreed with the Judicial Tenure Commission that she should have a six-month ban on ser excuse six me year. six-year yeah. ban on serving as a judge, which basically means if she is elected judge again, she is immediately on suspension. So, so she can still technically run. Absolutely, if if people elect her, she will become a judge for a six-year term, but she will be suspended. Uh, f yeah, for that six years. So. So that's pretty crazy. So why why didn't I mean was there no way to say no more judging for you? You're not allowed to run anymore? Is that just was that not an option for the Supreme Court to say that? I think there's an issue of you can't deny people their right to elect somebody. They couldn't basically deprive voters of the opportunity to make a mistake. The only way they could have kept her from being a judge and the Supreme Court I don't think has this power is if she's no longer a lawyer. So I think the only qualification oh, to, to be a, a judicial candidate is you have to be a lawyer, and then you have to you know go through the petition process and all that other stuff. So they couldn't ban her 
Uh, my understanding is they couldn't ban her from being a judge, but they can effectively keep her from serving if she's elected. And I don't know if anybody made a complaint to the uh, to the attorney grievance commission. They could take away her law license, um, and that would that would prevent her from becoming a judge in the future. Oh man! But, uh, I, I'm going to have a prediction that she gets elected somewhere along the line, be it now or six years from now, or. I, I just have a feeling she will just keep doing it. Because the way she got elected in the first place was pretty wild, which was because of, wasn't she putting out a bunch of videos or doing interviews about God and Jesus, and that really got her name out there? No, I mean, she did what a lot of candidates in Detroit do, and including me, is she got to as many churches as she could, and she met with the congregations, and she talked a lot about her faith. I think she talked a lot more about her faith than, than I talked about mine, but... Um, but I also would have done the job, and she didn't. So maybe we we score one in each category. But she she um, you know until she was elected judge, she seemed to be a fairly reasonable person. But from the jump, she just didn't want to do the damn job. And and uh, and there were all kinds of all kinds of questions about her conduct, the way she treated people who came in her courtroom, the way yeah. she treated people she met on the street, and she had this this rant at this woman who she blocked in at a uh, people's fitness and or LA fitness, I think it yeah. was. And uh, I, I went and met the woman who had the hassle with her. And she's like, man, this, this, this woman, I never been treated like that, let alone by a judge. And, uh, and the judge, the retired judge who served as the judge in that case to review her conduct, basically tried to cut her a big time break. And it just, it didn't work, man. It did not. Work. Well, so. She also had the placard that said she was on official business for the city, which she didn't work for the city, and she would just use that. I mean, I don't know if she ever really worked. She didn't. She she tore the cameras out. Yeah, when she did go to work, she didn't work, or she put people in jail. That's right. She threw somebody in in jail for contempt without you know giving them a chance to respond, without giving them a chance to get out. She threatened other people. I mean, and meanwhile, she uh, collected her her pay the whole time. The whole yes. Time. Yeah. It was. It was pretty disgraceful. And there's another judge who I exposed, uh, Tracy Green, who's awaiting a ruling from the Supreme Court on her disciplinary case. She's the one you may remember, who covered up for her son who was abusing her grandkids. So that case is working its way through the uh, through the wow. judicial disciplinary process, and it's going very, very slowly. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen there. She is still serving as a judge she is still being paid i don't know if she's still hearing cases at one time she was taken off the bench but uh but that's a hundred and seventy thousand wow. dollars or so a year of your money that's being wasted and huh. i think anybody who's gone to court knows it takes a long time for these cases to get resolved and one reason why is because there are more cases than there are judges obviously and so when you take judges out of the mix takes more time to get these matters resolved. Now, based on her track record, it may be better for the public that she's not deciding cases, but uh, nevertheless, she is getting your tax dollars just like Kalilia Davis did for six years. She collected almost a million dollars wow. for a job and that did no she work. didn't do, and when she did do, she did a shit job. So Spivey gets out, that's in the headlines. I'm like, damn, Kalilia Davis gets punched out. That was a little good news. And I ran into somebody when I was at the Mackinac Policy Conference where I dialed in uh, to the show who said, he comes up to me and he says, hey, um, uh, you want a Kilpatrick story? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, 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 always, I'm always up for Kilpatrick stories. This guy says, I was on a, there it is, thank you for the bell. <laughs> I was on a cruise and Kilpatrick was on a cruise with his family. And I said, what? He said, yeah, no, no money for restitution. Kilpatrick is on a cruise with his family. And I said, okay, well, I know cruises can be economical ways to have a good time. So, uh, you know, whatever. But people tell me these stories all the time. And I said, you know, do you have any evidence? He said, yeah, I got pictures. So he's got what? pictures of Kilpatrick working out in the gym on the cruise. But I'm like, you know, he could be working out anywhere. People work out and he loves to work out and he's a gym guy. So, okay, so whatever, you know, I mean... He's not a guy who works real hard, but he'll hit the treadmill and whatnot. And I said, okay, well, that's not really. He said, well, 
the crews went to the Catalina wine mixer. And I said, wait, there really is a Catalina wine mixer? You know, from Step Brothers? Remember the, oh, the, okay. yeah, the, the, the there, biggest yeah. helicopter leasing yeah. event in the, in the world? Yeah. And if, you don't, if I don't make my nut, you know, Brennan, I'm going you know, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna have this uh, Rob, what's his name, eat your dick? <laughs> you know, like Kobayashi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so because of the movie, they have created a Catalina wine mixer. Oh, really? Because of the movie? Yeah, they don't lease helicopters, but it's it's apparently this, you know, tourist thing. And this guy provided me with a picture of Kwame Kilpatrick walking underneath a banner oh, for the Catalina wine mixer. What so is this he doing guy there? he cannot apparently he's having a hell of a good time. He can't pay restitution, but he can continue to live off the hog or high on the hog. And uh yeah, so it was, I'd love to know how we got paid for it too. He's getting money somewhere. Of course and, he is. And the feds are trying to find it. I don't know how hard the Wayne County prosecutor is trying to find it. But this is, you know, I mean, it, it's, you know, you, you, I, 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 if Sean was here, he'd be rolling his eyes and checking his phone. Just let it go. But yeah. Kilpatrick will not leave our consciousness. Yeah. And, and I, I got my teeth clean this morning. If, any, if you're watching on you, how they look, they look good. They look I know. clean. Teebs, how they look. Did I get some spinach <laughs> in there? But the hygienist was telling about her husband, who worked for what used to be the Detroit Historical Department that ran the Historical Museum, lost his job when, because of the city's finances, the city cut the Historical Museum loose. He couldn't get another job with the city because when the private, the, the charitable folks took it over, like, we just don't want anybody who is associated with the city with us anymore. He has been suffering ever since then. I mean, he found another job, so he's a clever guy. But because, like all city retirees, his benefits were cut because of the mismanagement of Kwame Kilpatrick. And so when people say it's time to move on for Kwame, from Kwame Kilpatrick, as we mark the 10th anniversary of the bankruptcy, I will tell you, you know who can't move on? Tens of thousands mm. of city retirees who took these jobs that don't pay as well as the public sector, but they uh, the private sector, excuse me, but they took them because they knew the benefits were good and they could retire while they were still relatively young and they could enjoy that retirement and they planned on that and they budgeted for that they kept up their end of the bargain and the city of detroit and the bankruptcy court screwed them screwed them into the ground and the reason this city went bankrupt is because of the mismanagement and the corrupt leadership of kwame m kilpatrick amen no i mean I sean no okay good even sean is speechless just, just let him be uh, let him live his life what yeah. drives me nuts about it is he, he doesn't think he did anything wrong he no has no remorse he thinks he's the victim, um, and yet he seems to always come up winning somehow. You know, he got his sentence what commuted, and apparently has just an endless stream of money and support. And now he's preaching and selling a book, and yet can't pay a dime. Yeah, no in institution. It's, it's it's outrageous, and um, and so I'm going to make a rough transition. So I want to apologize in advance if if I send the wrong messages here, but. A couple of sad things happened, too, while I was gone. Um, uh, one of them is Kevin Dietz's wife, Missy, died yeah. suddenly. And so this is my first chance to express my condolences publicly to Kevin and his family. Um, Way too young. 57 years old. When you're on a trip like we were at 55 with our family, and you're thinking, well, how long are we going to work? How long are we going to work so we can have some time to do more travel and stuff like that? And then you hear somebody who was you know, an athlete and, uh, and an active person has died at 57. You're thinking, okay, we're just not going to come back. This is, you know, why do we want to work until 70? Well, be because you have to, to pay your bills, but just, just heartbreaking. And then Darren Nichols, uh, columnist at the free press, friend of the show, yeah. guest on this show, his mother passed oh, man. too. So, uh, so we want to express our condolences to both of their families and so here's where the transition gets a little rough. Uh, I'm not predicting or suggesting that Malik Shabazz is going to die. Oh, yeah. But Malik Shabazz apparently suffered a pretty serious heart attack and is in the hospital. So we hope Malik will get better. But this is... And every, everyone knows who Malik is. He, yeah. He's always the one um, out there, you know, fighting and um, kind of raising interest in missing people and murders that go unsolved in the city and the drug houses. I mean, he's... He is a Crash dynamic route, yeah. figure, also a polarizing figure. Sure. There's a lot of people who feel like he inserts himself into situation for 
personal gain. Um, but he also, as, as you say, has done a lot to help people too when raise issues. He's been really big on the Buy Black Detroit movement, trying to encourage Detroiters to spend their money in the city. He's been very critical of gas stations and other markets that he feels are not up to par and aren't serving Detroiters with the level of service and quality of goods that they deserve. So a lot of different feelings about Malik from all different points of the, the political compass, but you cannot deny that this man has been a giant on the Detroit political scene for over 20 years. And one of the funniest and most amazing moments, I think, in Detroit, recent Detroit TV history. And of course- I didn't even know this thing existed. It, it involves- No, 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 we're not to oh, that we're not yet. Even no, 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 that? no. Oh, we're going to wow. bring it back to Kilpatrick this in a minute. That's a good one, too, yeah. But it, of course, it involves Charlie LaDuff- but when there was talk about creating Hans Farms on the east side where this millionaire was going to buy some abandoned property and try and turn it into uh, orchards and then forests and all of this stuff, Malik Shabazz appeared before Detroit City Council and said, if you sell him this land, we will burn this land down. Something to that. And he was really against the state takeover of Belle Isle, but very, very strident language. So Charlie sits him down. And, and, of course, Malik, you know, is, is going to give an interview. And he plays it back for Malik, and he turns to Malik, and he says, what the hell are you thinking? And Malik just starts laughing. He's like, yeah, I kind of got caught up in the moment. got kind of a little carried away, which I thought was just... I mean, it, it was just so great. And the fact that he, he uh, that Charlie put him on the spot, and Malik had the, the good, good nature to say, yeah, sometimes, you know, your blood gets... Well, didn't Charlie also say... What do you mean you're going to burn the city down? Have you looked around? <laughs> there was a, yeah, Charlie's hitting those a, golf balls through certain parts yeah. of the city had been burned down. But but I had an encounter with Malik uh, on the day that Kwame Kilpatrick was sentenced in the uh, text message case in Wayne County Circuit Court. And he was outside the courthouse or outside the courtroom. And he's like, you know, oh, you know, all you, he, he, you know, he was big on the whole white devils thing. But he's like, you know, all you media guy, you know, everybody's trying to make money off of Kwame Kilpatrick and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and he says, but, but you're okay. And I said, no, no, if we're all devils, I'm a devil too. You know, and he's like, okay, whatever. But he, he's pretty <laughs> funny about it. Well, the irony is. All these guys in the media trying to make money off of Kwame Kilpatrick, supposedly, who should go and star in a movie <laughs> based on the life of Kwame Kilpatrick, but un unknown to us, amateur thespian Malik Shabazz, and here is the trailer. This is a fictional, uh, this isn't based on... Uh, Fictionalized, uh, yeah. Uh, he's, what's it called, the Prince of... Uh, he's like Kevin Kitchen or something, but uh, Sin in the City. But, there you but, go, yeah, Sin in the City. Yeah. But yeah, if you're watching us on YouTube or, or Facebook, you'll see it. If not, we'll put a link on our website, but check this out. It is pure gold. We are in the house now. In Detroit, one man's obsession... It's about power. ...may cost his political Malik. career... And there's the Christine Beatty wannabe. I'm going to introduce your boy, my son, the mayor, Calvin <laughs> Kennedy. Not too far from real life there. Calvin Kennedy. And I need your help. Why don't you take care of your city? I can't run the city because of you. Why are you sitting behind my husband's desk? Uh-oh. Oh! Oh, now Malik's in there. Under the jaw. Hello. With a city torn apart. Texting as he walks past the spirit of Detroit. Family on the brink. Will he oh! go too far? Contract test. Whoa! And pay the ultimate price. Whoa! Wow. I sentence you to five years. The D has not seen the last of us. We're coming back. I love you more than I do my wife. My favorite line in the whole wow. trailer. I run this city. This? Oh! Okay, that's my second I favorite line. <laughs> the main. Scandal in the City, a Detroit story. DVD available in stores now. I gotta tell you, I, I don't think he's that bad of an actor. No! And <laughs> Not I, one bit. I think he's actually pretty good. I've I've never seen this, which seems amazing because it feels like I've consumed so much Kilpatrick media. But it's just funny that Malik was like, you know, everybody's trying to profit. He ends up playing a Kwame Kilpatrick-inspired 
character and uh and did did a pretty good job so uh anyway we we hope that uh yeah, hope that Ma- well. malik will get better because there's certainly there's certainly more issues where we know that he wants to be heard and and he represents a, a pretty uh pretty popular and a pretty dynamic point on the on the political spectrum so so it'd be good to have him back out there and and the thing about malik that whether you agree with him or not and as Charlie demonstrated with that piece for Fox 2 about 10 years ago, he returns your calls. He'll answer your questions. And there are so many people in political life these days, so many people involved in, in, the, in the, the public space that, uh, that don't want to talk to anybody who doesn't agree with them. And they just, it, they're just the chicken shits. And, and there's a lot of elected officials, a lot of elected officials in Detroit, in fact, who just they won't answer questions because they feel like they don't have to. And whether or not you think it's going to help or hurt you, you should feel an obligation when you have a public position to respond to reasonable inquiries. It's just pretty obvious, pretty sad. So yeah. Anyway. We'll get well soon. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I guess a lot happened while I was gone. Gee. <laughs> Oh man, the geeks have inherited the earth. Did I do that? What a dork. Does him wanting to play with us again mean that he's turning into a geek or we're turning into cool guys? Well, before we talk about somebody who's not very good with money, why don't we tell you about some people who are excellent with money Ah, and can help you keep some in your pocket and frankly make your financial dreams come true. I don't think that's overstating it. Let's start with uh, with David Hall and Hall Financial. Absolutely. The housing market had some pretty good numbers today, actually. I guess there's more inventory coming online, which should help stabilize it. And rates are, um, I think, back to where they were in 07. So they're still coming down. They're still dropping a bit. And Hall Financial's there that, to help you out. And if you want to pull equity out to pay off maybe high interest debts that are going on or make home updates, it's not just always about buying a new home. Um, Hall Financial can do a lot for you. If you're thinking about buying a home, though, make sure you call them first to get your five-star Certified pre-approval is the pre-approval that all the realtors trust and buyers love because they know you're set and you're good to go. So yeah, callhallfirst.com is the website. You can also find it off of mlsoledetroit.com and link it there. Or you can simply call them at 866-CALL-HALL. And as uh, ML said, another guy, a fun guy. You usually don't think of financial guys as being terribly fun, do you? You know, you see them with uh, sitting behind a desk with their abacus and pencil but uh, not luke nowacki luke nowacki is a good fun guy who knows a lot about numbers and a lot about uh, investing and you can call him right now to get a free consultation at 248-663-4748 luke will tell you you know where you want to put your money so your money will grow and you'll be financially secure for retirement so yeah give luke a call yeah luke knows how to have a good time he knows how to work hard he knows how to play hard and he knows how to pay those bills so to invest you, hard that's right well and that's the <laughs> thing you want your money to work hard for you yeah while you're playing hard so if you want to find out how that is done call luke nowacki because when you call luke he will make it all about you sweetheart Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associates Inc. Member FINRA SIPC. Royal Alliance Associates Inc. is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names. Products or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associates Inc. So I got to tell you about this week's geek. I, I read a story about the... Uh, so again, somebody in greatest shits, Hunter Biden, reaches a plea deal on his tax cases and his gun case and all that other stuff. And we can debate whether that was a fair outcome and whether he should have been charged and whether he should have taken a plea and how a lot of people don't get charged with those crimes. I don't want to get into the weeds on that, but there's an IRS whistleblower who said that he was prevented from doing everything he thought he needed to do to get to the bottom of this case. We're going to see how that plays out. That concerns me very much. If you know anything about me, you know whistleblowers to have a special place in my heart. So that's that's the story. We're going to learn more about that. But what I want to focus in on is a text message that Hunter Biden sent on July 30th of 2017. Mm-hmm. And however you feel about Democrat, Republican, Hunter Biden, whistleblower, persecution, prosecution, whatever, there's no way you can't see this as the biggest pile of bullshit ever. So here's the text that Hunter Biden sent at the time his dad, Joe Biden, is a former vice president. Now, he is trying to get a business partner to fulfill some expected promise. He texts, I am sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been filled. 
tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand. And now means tonight. Jeez. And Z, he's writing to a businessman named Henry Zhao. If I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge that you will regret not following my direction. And by the way, if you still weren't up to, to speed on the concept, he adds, I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father. How many times is he going to name drop Joe Biden in this yeah. text where he's trying to squeeze this guy apparently on some kind of deal he's got going on in China? I mean, you know, I know he's he is got- nothing without who his last name, what his last name is, Daddy. Yeah, and it's a total uh, zero. You know, his mother and sister were killed in a car crash. My heart goes out to him for that. Yeah, but his brother, his brother to be very died pro- of brain cancer. But his brother's very productive. My my heart goes out to him for that. His brother's wife only banged him a couple times. <laughs> you know, my heart goes out to him for that. He has an addictive personality. Obviously, uh, addicts have some problems that we need to. We need to cut them some slack and try and help them. All those things Hunter Biden has to deal with, I really sympathize with. But throwing your old man into a deal. No scruples, man. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, you love your father. I don't question that he loves his father. I don't question that it's Joe Biden loves him. And I think it's probably made life tougher for Joe Biden because he loves his last surviving son so much. But can't you just try and cut the old man a break for all the shit he's done to try and bail you out and not drag him into all this stuff? I mean... God bless you on everything else, but people use their family members to try and get some sort of leverage. You suck. So, Hunter Biden, good luck with the 12 steps. But this week, you're starting at number one as our Geek of the Week. See you again. There's an all-night party in room 7609. So normally, uh, Catch You Cafe sponsors Room 7609, but it's about 12.30 here as we broadcast live from Red Shovel Network headquarters. If you're watching us live, we appreciate it. If you're listening to us, this message is still relevant pretty much around the clock because I'm feeling a bit peckish, as they say overseas, a bit assurient, if you will. <laughs> and I saw lots of places serving burgers, and I didn't have any of them because I knew none of them could compare with the burger you can get at the Irish Coffee Bar and Grill, which if you've been to the east side, you already know they have the best burgers in town. They're located on Mac in Grills Point. Irish Coffee serves up those delicious ground rounds for just 5 bucks on Mondays from 5 until 11 And Tuesday and Wednesdays, they have a special treat on the menu, Sloppy Joe's. Get there before they're gone. And whenever you go, you're going to find great food and great vibes in a classic Irish pub. And I know a little bit about Irish pubs and Scottish pubs, and I rate the Irish coffee with any of them. Great place to sit down, pull a pint, talk to people behind the bar, talk to people at the next table. And it's run by, get this, a Kennedy. What could be more Irish than that? So if you see me there, be sure to ask me for an onion ring because I love to share. And then I'll probably ask you for a French fry. But that's the Irish coffee <laughs> on the east side. Where they also appreciate good music like uh, like this little ditty suggested to us by listener John. He said, hey, did you know that Rick Astley and the Blossoms are covering the Smiths? And I told Mark and Mark said, oh, my God, I need to get more Smiths in my life. So here is Rick Astley and the Blossoms. <laughs> so never heard anything I would have well, said. Oh, was that? Maybe I misheard you. It was probably the accent. <laughs> Performing There is a, life that, a Light That Never Goes Out.
Pretty damn cool. Can this guy never fully relax? He's, he's still wearing a double-breasted suit here. You know, I know he's become a, a joke because of the whole Rick rolling. Yeah, we're going to give you up. Yeah, and that video, that old video looks ridiculous, but d- the guy can sing, man. Oh, yeah, no, he's got the blue-eyed soul. He still looks pretty good, a little sort of oh. like a cross between the mm. original Rick Astley and Nick Nolte. He's looking a little a little raw, Heidi, but... Uh, yeah, and he's moving. He's not just standing yeah. there. Uh, I've missed you for so long. Well, but, so as a Smith super fan, I mean, do you like that? Well, I mean, he said a bad word in the middle of it, which is very un Morrissey like because, oh, yeah, of course, right. Morrissey's so celibate that if a double decker bus did do that to them, he'd be personally offended. But this is the first Smith song I ever heard. And I was dating this woman who it was a very intense relationship and she introduced me to the Smiths and she really dug me and I really dug her and it was pretty wild. And she would play this and I'd think, what the hell? Are, you, were you, are we going to die together? I don't mm. know if we, I, I think if we go out on a date, I'll do the driving because I don't want to drive into an underpass. And uh, if a strange fear grips me, I I'm, not going to act, you know, but, um, but it really opened my eyes to a lot of different music, a lot of different, a lot of different things in my life. So I love the Smiths. I love them because of their music, because of what they have to say, because of when I became aware of them. And this is a great tune. And, and I have to say that I do think that this music and this song in particular really kind of connects with a lot of the angst and the anxiety that a lot of young people who are the age I was when I first heard of the Smiths are feeling that there's this this sort of sadness and That's desperation really and longing and yeah so I like the song I, guess, I just I, I just meant, what I meant to say <laughs> some people I would think uh, that they wouldn't like it because it's it's not the Smiths it's kind of a, and that's what this was this was Rick Ashley with uh, the Blossoms doing a whole cover set of the Smiths yeah well you know who else covers the Smiths now uh, Morrissey and uh, Johnny Marr. So I mean, you know, no, I know. And, and Morrissey, I don't know, maybe this isn't a surprise to you, but I was a little bit surprised that he has no problem with it. He, you know, I think that here's the quote: "Anything that generates interest in that tired old Smith's warhorse is a testimony to the wallop it packed." So, kind of like, yeah, no, we we appreciate that people like our music. Johnny Marr, on the other hand, seems kind of livid that uh, these guys did this set at Glastonbury. <laughs> Where Johnny Marr was also at. I mean, he played with the Pretenders, 
And I, I don't know. I don't know why he would be so upset about it. Maybe it's because they were also pretenders. Pretending to be the Smiths, but he was with the real pretenders. Oh, that was weak. No, no Chrissy Hine love? Okay. No, no I, I love the pretenders, but I was just surprised that he would be that upset about it or that pissed off about it. And yeah, he, I am that too. That he even because, talked to the Blossoms about it. Because he's a pretty good, good-natured guy. Yeah. And the Blossoms are from Manchester, and they make no bones about their admiration for for the Manchester sound and the bands that came up through Manchester. So, uh, so that is weird that Johnny is kind of shitty about it. I, I wonder. I, I, I wonder what the backstory is. Is it because he just doesn't want Rick Astley to sing the song? I don't know. Yeah, and you know, I've always thought of Rick Astley as kind of a benign uh, fellow. I mean, I, but he's become this joke of sorts you know rick rolling and sure but not not by his own volition i mean he kind of got sucked up in it and credit to him for having a good sense of humor about it but the guy can sing his music was really good pop music he was a pretty good looking dude uh, oh really well there's uh, a good looking yeah. yeah, man it's twice you mentioned how great he looks well, he, he is what he is. What can I tell you? I know, but I just I know warned too many. Uh, anyway, uh, Rick played two sets too at Glastonbury because he did that one indoors. That was that dark indoor tent, which was jam packed. But of course, he it's a did good looking crowd too. And I, <laughs> I can say that because I know him. You know, and he did that. Um, you know, his big song, "The Never Gonna Give You Up." Here's a clip of that. And what I thought was funny about it is. You know the security that lines up in front of the stage to make sure nobody attacks the yeah. artists. They had their own like choreographed dance, which was really, really weird. I don't think the woman in the biker sort shorts is security. No, 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 not her. You'll see. Okay. I think the Smiths cover set had more people there, but I know what I would have stood in line for. Oh yeah, there. There's the line of security. And the Rick roll a little. There's your biker short chick again. Some of them are better dancers than others. I know, but how weird is it to see security doing a choreographed dance to any song? I think it's awesome. No, I think it's great. It's, yeah. just, it's really funny. It's just you know, they planned it. Well, that's what I mean is he's, you know, he he does what smart people do, what reasonable people do. He is gets it. When there's a joke, it's you fun. get in on it. Yeah, man. you have fun with it. Yeah. Everybody else is having fun with it. Now, I don't know about that coral colored double breasted suit with the white hey, shoes. I thought you liked how much he looked. No, I just I want him to relax a little bit, but uh... And are those are those Sansa Belt pants he's wearing? They look like they button across the front. That is not cool. If, if you like live music and you got time to kill, the Glastonbury uh, YouTube page that the BBC put out is really good. I mean just a load of different artists. With live music. I love watching live music. Oh, yeah. And those festivals, you know, I, I always think I want to go to those, but I, I remember oh, I going to, to one of the really early Lollapaloozas, and it's just always hot and sweaty, and you're always way at the back. Yeah, but everyone's just, hot and sweaty and way at the back. You're all in it together, man. No? I think I'm the only one that matters. I think uh, <laughs> you've made that clear before. I just want to feed right into Sean's I, whole narrative there, but I just think yeah. it'd be a blast to be there and see all the different artists and people watch. I like people. Watching. Yeah. No, well, the other, the only down thing about these festivals is if there's somebody that you're dying to see that you really want to see, like, yeah. like big audio dynamite was playing in Chicago for, I think it was for Lollapalooza a few years ago. I don't think they ever play. And I was just like, Oh my God, they're, they're going to be there. I got to go see them. But they only play for like 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And so if there's a band that you really love, you're only going to get a very small sample of them at the festival. But but yeah, I mean... It's the event, right? It's a pretty damn good way to spend a weekend. So so now, if you want to hear some Smiths music performed live, the Smiths United will be at, where else? The Cadu Cafe on Friday, July 21st. So please go there. I am telling you, unless I'm hit by lightning, I will be at that show and I would be interested from hearing from you, Mark, and yeah. maybe from from our listeners. Uh, for my 25th anniversary, Teresa and I got married in Scotland. Mm-hmm. And for my 25th anniversary, she was really excited about what she got me. <laughs> and she got me a kilt. Oh. And I'm thinking I might wear the kilt to go see the Smiths United. Do it. On Friday. The Why 25th. wouldn't you? You would have no problem wearing a kilt. I got really skinny legs. Do you really? 
I do. Now I really want to see you wear a kilt. Yeah. So, but that doesn't sound like <laughs> it doesn't sound like you want to see it for the right reasons. But, oh, of course uh, not. No. But uh, oh, whatever. When in Scotland, right? So, if you're listening, if you have some fashion advice for me, let me know. It's uh, it's kind of woolen too, so I don't know in July if that's going to be. Yeah, you'll be fine. Nothing like a that's sweaty gonna kilt. Be a smart. Yeah, it's uh, it's nothing like that. Reminds me of another. When you have a sweaty kilt, you also have what Alec Baldwin had on Saturday Night Live. Oh yeah. Shreddy balls. Shreddy yeah. balls. Well, we have uh, we have upgraded our website, uh, ML Soul of Detroit, in one very small but important way. If you would like to donate for many, many years, you could only donate through <laughs> PayPal. Now, does it work? We believe, and we hope you will help test our theory that you can donate by using Venmo. Mark, how do people do this since you are the architect behind this major uh, upgrade to our... Allegedly, you can go to mlsoladetroit.com, little uh, donate button on the top, and uh, you can choose it, PayPal or Venmo. I think it works. Uh, there's no evidence whatsoever that it <laughs> that works. It does, yeah. Someone please try it, even but if it's one penny. That may just be evidence that people don't, Maybe it doesn't work. don't care to donate. Or it's so. evidence that it just doesn't work and I did it wrong. Yeah, so if you'd like to get involved in this research study, it's easy to participate. <laughs> just go to ML Soul of Detroit. Dot com hit the pay or donate button and, and uh, choose the Venmo option and and, and you know uh, PayPal still does work as Bryant knows a uh, a regular supporter of the show which we appreciate and in case we forgot to thank Kelly and Michael for their support yes. uh, we want to thank them because we can't thank them enough or entice them enough to do it again because it really is easy and we very much appreciate it. We also appreciate your feedback. Uh, you know, uh, Frank was asking me, does the Butterfield 8 line work? 313-288. Butterfield 8? Is that right? Uh, no. Did I do that wrong? No. <laughs> That's why it doesn't work. Ah, uh, shit. Anyways, but uh, yeah, if you go to our website, you can find a phone. Maybe you leave a voicemail for us. Maybe we'll even find it. And if we do, there's a good chance that we will play it. But the best way to get back to us is just to rate us on social media uh rate us on on whatever platform you're listening to us we would appreciate we have over 600 ratings averaging about 4.7 out of 5 so we love that so please keep the ratings coming we could use some fresh ones and send your feedback to ml soul of detroit at gmail.com uh one of the <laughs> some of the feedback we did get on social media jimmy simply said commenting on the shows where i was gone definitely more interesting lately Oh, ouch, that's mean. Of course, Jimmy spells his name J-I-M-Y, so I don't know. Hey, what's wrong? you mean to him? I think he's a great guy. And that one dude, uh, what's his name, John, is, I think he's been enjoying the shows a lot lately. He, oh, the, the, the I know mean, what you're talking about, yeah. Mean John, yeah, I think you know. Mean John. It's very mean, mean. Maybe he's the one that gave you an F in journalism. Meany guy. Uh, no, if he had, he would have provided... Uh, considerable marks on my paper but Dan did write to us at mlsoulofdetroit at gmail.com says ML I saw on the front page of the Freep something about Baker College being a scam mm. and finally being pursued by the feds I know it's education but as the on guard watchman over the state isn't this your wheelhouse I think that's giving me a lot of ground to cover but let's move on and if it's not yours per se what about dana nessel and state lawmakers how can a college be known naked for how can a college be a known naked scam for decades with campuses across the state upwards of over thirty thousand working class students at a time having their lives destroyed bringing in eye-popping sums of cash to the fat cat execs, including a $300 million slush fund nonprofit they built up with profits, and nobody does a thing about it. Nobody even says a thing about it. It's not like they're under the radar. They just blew $51 million on a flashy construction scam in Royal Oak with large campuses all over the state. The sole purpose of this scam college has always been a graft pit for the crooks who run it, a cash register. Everyone knows this, and no one did a thing for decades. Even now, it's only on free, not picked up by everyone across the state to make sure the word is out. I know this state is a joke, but good Lord, it amazes me what is allowed to fester here. It's like everyone is in on scamming the residents. Mm. Well, Dan, I too have had questions about Baker College for many years, 
And a lot of those questions were answered by David Jesse of the Detroit yeah. Free Press and Anna Clark of ProPublica, who wrote a lengthy expose in the Detroit Free Press, an award-winning expose a while ago. in the Detroit Free Press last year. Yeah. So a lot of what Dan's talking about has come out because of hardworking reporters who have brought this this situation, shall we say, to the forefront. I don't want to prejudge anything, but one of the things that they established pretty clearly is that Baker College and other for-profit colleges do a really good job of enticing people to go there, promise them substantial financial aid, and then put them in programs that may not be the best fit for them. And then when they drop out, they are still stuck repaying that financial aid. So they promise you a future you might not get put in the right track, but whether you stick with it or drop out, you still have to pay back some of that loan money. Of course, the college gets to keep the loan money because they call it tuition, mm. and you call it a debt. So it's very curious that the feds are finally looking at this. This has been a problem for a long, long time. time. Yeah, and, uh, I, and I'm do- glad the Free Press ran that story and has run some of the groundbreaking stories in the past. I do remember too, and, and this goes back to your whole thing about whistleblowers. That um, after the Free dropped that big article, uh, Baker, of course, was not none too happy. No. Didn't challenge anything in the article, but then threatened legal action against the whistleblower, the teacher, who talked to the reporters, talked to David Jesse. Yeah, no, there there was some pushback. Let's take some balls. Yeah, and um, I should say, uh, speaking of pushback, uh, you may recall that Michigan State uh, was denying the free press access yeah. to some records uh, re- regarding uh, Mel Tucker's contract. The free press has won that lawsuit. And uh, my understanding is that Michigan State will be making some payment to the free press oh. for the costs of fighting for public records. And as the on-guard columnist at the free press, who does try and keep an eye on the entire state, there's one of me and there's a big old state, one of my early columns admonished my beloved alma mater, Michigan State, for not being an open place and for saying by sitting on records that we all know should be disclosed – you diminish confidence in our institution, and you pick fights that you cannot win. Yeah, they weren't going to win. Will that. be costly. They weren't going to win that. Look how much money they spent on it. Yeah, They're hiring yeah. lawyers, and now they got to pay the the cost of doing it for the free press. Yeah, and and the money they spent, Pointless. it's it's not enough to lower tuition. No, but still. But the money they spent would Principal. be enough to help some more kids who deserve a shot at a higher education get that shot at a yeah. higher education. So once again, I. I beg my fellow Spartans, the Spartans who are in charge of these things, please stop trying to sit on records that are going to come out. Because when they come out, as these records come out, I think if, 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 if you recall, and you can find this on an earlier episode, the records were not revelatory. I think the only person who was kind of surprised by what was in them was me, because I didn't realize that Michigan State paid as much of Tucker's salary as, as we do. But there were no there were no bombs in there. It yeah. just the cover up once again worse was worse than what <laughs> was going to be revealed. So, so Dan, thanks for writing to us. Thanks for putting this issue on the uh, on the airwaves since we've already put it in the news pages. But uh, we love to hear from you. Please don't hesitate to write to us at ml solve detroit at gmail dot com and rate us. And if you want to put something on social media we try and keep an eye on that as well you of course can follow us on facebook the facebook page is ml no periods elric you can follow me on twitter at elric where i'll be talking about my work and of course whatever is going on on the podcast and um and you can listen to the sean and carlos <laughs> podcast uh if perhaps you lapse into a coma and you need some sort of stimulation well, no, if you need some sort of stimulation, that might not be the place to go. Unless Carlos is there. That dude is <laughs> it's a live Mr. Stimulation. It's yeah. Ball O energy. <laughs> and every once in a while, Sean will share a recipe, which is he's a good cook. That's right. You know, you put it in a pan and you, you know. Um, there was a prediction while I was gone that I may berate some of the selections for room 7609. I, yeah? I, I was... I was pleasantly surprised. Did you like my one last week? Uh, I did, but I don't remember what it is. The Go Go's. Oh song yeah. Song about Bob Welch. So, oh yes, yes. Thank you. So, th- I, please don't go thirty minutes on this. No, I'll be very brief. I'll <laughs> tell you what I liked about that Go Go selection 
was the Bob Welch story. Yeah. But we have played the Go-Go's before in Room 769. We played This Town, which is one of my absolute favorite new wave tunes and probably the most underappreciated uh, uh, Go-Go's. I was just looking for a song that had a story with it. Yeah, no. and, and Kind of like, like today's song had a story with it. Yeah, and I also confused Brandy Carlisle with... Uh, uh, with, um, with Brandy, oh my God. Um, Belinda, Belinda Carlisle. Carlisle. Yeah. yeah, they're sisters. So, really? No. Okay. As much as uh, John Lynn and Francis... What's his name? John, John Lynn Walker Lynn. John Walker Lynn and Paul Lynn. And Paul Lynn, yes. Which is, was on the pre-show that no one got to hear. Yeah, and and, uh, and Dave Gahan Except for John. and Adam oh, Dave Gahan. Yeah, yeah, so. And Adam Gahan. Yeah, so... <sighs> what a Until, waste of time that was. Yeah, no, it's uh, what a waste of uh, what one, a waste of lives. One thing we're good at doing is wasting time. But hopefully, hopefully the stories may be long, but are well told. That's our or not. That's our goal. Yeah, well, it's, we're working on it. <laughs> Four years in, we're still working on it. It's a work in progress. But we appreciate you tuning in again this week. We are going to have a very special episode coming up for the Fourth of July. Uh, we are trying to line up a major newsmaker to talk about a pretty big case. So. Stick around for that. If we can't land that whale, we actually have a, another pretty cool idea where we may be sharing some wisdom with, with all of you out there who obviously can use it because you're listening to this show. So, um, so hopefully we'll, we'll get you on a better track. Uh, Mark, everything good? You got the power back on? Yeah, I'm all Ambinos right. Yeah. are happy, warm. You're back from Niagara Falls. Yes, my life is fine. Everything's good. Okay. I hate how losing power just flipped it upside down for 24 hours. Oh, dude, we're still recovering from the flood from two yeah. years ago. I heard some places on the east side flooded while we were gone. I of course thought, they did. Not again. Of course please. they did. They always do. Not again. Of course, if they had, they could have I'm sure they fixed it all by all now. All the cat piss in the basement because we have the most evil cat in the world that really gets... Uh, unhappy Gross. when we're gone. Right. Yeah, no, the, the hated piss cat. I well, I'm glad you're back. Anything. Yes, it's good to be back. And uh, we appreciate you guys sticking with us. We will be back next week. But in the meantime, we ask our friend Cyrus to take us out. Can you dig that? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday. When the Soul of Detroit presents ML Elric in the show off. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Hollywood.